So, we have been discussing the high electron mobility transistor based on gallium master substrate. Now, the question that we have to ask is, is there a possibility of getting better performance in terms of mobility, in terms of uh, higher velocities, is it possible? In fact, if you recall indium arsenide is one of the materials which has got very high electron mobility, rho field electron mobility of about 30,000 centimeter square per volt second. So, can we make use of that? We cannot make use of indium arsenide straight away because its band gap is low, but we can mix it with gallium arsenide and you can get gallium indium arsenide or indium gallium arsenide whatever way you want to call it you can get it and you can check up the band gap okay and that material should have mobilities better than gallium arsenide okay for example i just go into this diagram you can see this is the velocity field characteristics of indium gallium arsenide y is 0 is gallium arsenide. So, if you are putting gallium indium arsenide, you can put it other way also. It all depends which one you are focusing upon. I am just focusing okay, y equals 0 is gallium arsenide. You can see the velocity field characteristic is like this. Peaking around 2 into 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second, around 3 kV. So, 3, 3.2 kV per centimeter peaking is taking place. Then it saturates almost goes down to about 10 to the power of 7. If you take indium arsenide, you can see the fantastic mobility, sloping very sharply and then going right up to about 4.4 .4 into 10 to the power of 7 centimeter per second. Unfortunately, we cannot use it directly because of the low band gap. So, now you can see keep on changing y from 0 to 1 you get different curves. Other thing that I want to note here is indium arsenide will have higher mobility, higher peak velocity and everything, but it will also have a lower saturation velocity. You can see it has gone down below 0.8 right away. So, saturation velocity is smaller, but if you can operate in this region, make use of this high velocity and high velocity overshoot effects, then that is the material, but to make it useful, you must have a band gap which is higher. So, take y equal to about 0.5, you can see here, that is indium 0.5, gallium 0.5, 50, 50. If you take that, you can see the velocity is quite high, 2.8 in 10 to the 7 and the saturation velocity is becoming comparable to that of gallium arsenide, tending towards gallium arsenide. So, you sort of have a mixture of the two. So, the key thing now is the lattice match between gallium arsenide and indium, indium arsenide or gallium arsenide and indium gallium arsenide. The whole problem is indium has a lattice constant of or the tetrahedral radius of 1.44 angstroms, gallium is uh, something like 1.26 angstroms. That mismatch brings in lattice mismatch. So, you are not able to grow gallium indium arsenide or gallium arsenide without defects generated, but we will see later today if possible that such a thing also is possible if you take certain things into account. Okay. We will go back to the top. Right now, our understanding is you need really lattice matching. You definitely need that. So, you can have a material which has a 
y of over 0.5 or around that. Let us go back and see now. So, that has better performance than gallium arsenide in terms of mobility, in terms of uh, peak velocity etcetera. Let us go back and see that now. Now, it so turns out that you have seen already that if you take gallium indium arsenide where indium is 0.53, gallium is 0.47 that has a lattice match with indium phosphate. If you go back to the old curves that we have plotted shown gallium indium arsenide lattice match with the indium phosphate. In fact, we discussed the detector where gallium indium arsenide with indium equal to 0.53 on indium phosphate. We have discussed PI and detector like that. So, that shows that this lattice match is there. So, now that means if you want to make use of gallium indium arsenide which has got better mobility, better velocity over shoot effects etcetera or better peak velocity. then you must go it on indium phosphate. So, the a different device altogether based on indium phosphate substrate emerged with the gallium indium arsenide as a channel material. So, gallium indium arsenide gives actually electron mobility of the order of 12,000, in fact, even about 15,000 centimeter square per volt second. So, you got that much mobility which is much higher than that of gallium arsenide. And velocity, higher effective velocity is close to 3, just now we saw you get with gallium indium arsenide. Compared to gallium arsenide, it is much better. Okay. So, what you are now looking for is the indium, gallium indium arsenide based or indium phosphate based hemp with indium phosphate semi insulating material on the top of that to grow gallium indium arsenide. On the top of that, you must put a material which is wide band gap. Okay. And that material must also match with gallium indium arsenide. In fact, it so turns out that is, it is, we will see what are the two materials, aluminum indium arsenide. Okay. So, now just this is just out of interest, just to see that what sort of effective masses uh, gallium indium arsenide has got compared to gallium arsenide. Obviously, the mobility is high, and obviously, because of mobility is high, effective mass must be much lower. You can see indium arsenide has got very low effective mobility 0.025 ratio effective mass by the actual mass and compared to about 0 0.7, 0 0.07 or 0 0.067 actually for gallium arsenide it is much lower. It is just an information that I am just putting across to you that at the very x, that is x in the gallium indium arsenide, you get better and better effective masses, lower effective mass, higher mobility. That is the structure, cross section of the indium phosphate hemp structure. Nothing new here, all that you would see is semi insulating indium phosphate substrate, buffer layer, you can go gallium indium arsenide on semi insulating indium phosphate, that is magic there. The buffer layer is actually is grown before you actually grow the real channel material. This buffer layer, as I mentioned earlier, it absorbs any of the defects which are present in the substrate. Before you grow, if you grow the channel material on the semi insulating gallium indium phosphate, there are chances that what are different, whatever defects are present in the semi insulating substrate, impurities, defects, etcetera, etcetera, can uh, get absorbed by the channel layer. You do not want that. You want a buffer layer which will absorb all those defects or impurities, so that this layer is very clean. Okay. So, you have you can see gallium 0.47 indium 0.53 arsenic channel with quite high mobility you can get. Then this is of course, what you get when you put that two dimensional electron gas. This is not a layer, it is actually too thick put here, it is actually a thin layer two dimensional electron gas and structurally you have gallium indium arsenide on that undoped aluminum indium arsenide. Aluminum indium arsenide you see it is uh, a wider band gap material compared to this gallium indium arsenide. In fact, the band gap of al aluminum indium arsenide is about 1.46 electron volts, close to that of gallium arsenide. The nice thing is that layer has lattice match with this gallium indium arsenide layer. Okay. Notice here aluminum 0 0.48, 0 0.52. So, okay. And on the top of that, and this is a spacer layer which is 20 to 40 angstroms undoped, and then the doped layer must be there. 
if you look back the philosophy of or the principle of uh, hemp an undoped lower band gap material on the top of that a doped high band gap material separated by a spacer layer that is the principle. You add more layers to bring in better performance like this buffer layer etcetera. So, undoped layer lower band gap 0.75 that is known about this band gap for calamity arsenide. Spacer layer undoped 1.46 is the band gap electron volts. Doped layer how much doping can put of course, now depends upon the short barrier here ok 1.46 electron volts band gap. Then on the top of that you see here one more material layer is added which you call this contact layer. The whole idea is to put a layer above a wide band gap material a lower band gap material ok. This can be a uh, material which is even calamity marsnate, ok, which has much lower band gap. What is the idea of putting that? So, that this ohmic contact is a good ohmic contact. You can make very good ohmic contact with a material which has a band gap which is low. So, that is the idea in almost all the high electron mobility transistors, you will have a top layer which is a lower band gap material, that is the contact material, ok. You can choose your material to put which will have a good match with this particular layer. Okay. You do not care if it is a defective layer. In fact, if you make want to make a ohmic contact, it will be better if it is a defective layer. Okay. When you alloy gold germanium into gallium arsenide, you have a defective layer, highly defective layer actually, alloyed co contact, it makes a good contact. So, that is the contact layer. So, this is the structure. Now, just few things about uh, these properties of these layers, just a quick glance of these things to get a better feel or to put a, a summary of the property of this material. I put two, three tables. The one table I could not accommodate in one, so split it up into several. Band gap, you know you can see some slight variations here and there, table code. Band gap, gallium arsenide 1.43, gallium indium arsenide 0.75, indium phosphide 1.35. In fact, aluminum indium arsenide that you put here that also has a band gap close to gallium arsenide ok. You do not try to put at this stage gallium arsenide on this because there will be lattice mismatch, but aluminum indium arsenide has got a good lattice match. So, you get a band gap material which is of that order ok. Indium phosphide of course, 1.35 mobility gallium arsenide See this 10,000 is a very optimistic value. You get okay. It may not be exactly at that value that you get, but people have quoted these values, which are uh, some theoretical estimates. And then gallium indium arsenide about 15,000. See quite high mobility, 1.5 times that. Indium phosphide. Generally, people talk about 5,000. Here in this particular table, which I saw, it's about 6,000. Maybe it's an optimistic value, or some theoretical estimate. If you go this is a pure material. How much mobility you can get depends upon how much is the purity. If you take 10 to power 17 doping, then you can see all the mobility is rolled out. But with the gallium indium arsenide, even when the doping is 10 to power 17, you can get about 8000. But we are not bothered about that doping, we are bothered about this undoped layer, which is the channel layer. Dielectric constant. This is important when you make this uh, top doped layer otherwise it is not so important. This is just as a for a completion sake I put this all these values because in one place you have got these materials because these are the materials which are very popular 13, 13.5, 12.4 not much different. L gas also aluminum gallium arsenide also falls into this same range. If it was 0.067 you can see here much smaller indicating mobility is much higher. India pass by 0.077 mobility lower than gallium arsenide. Gun threshold, the gun threshold actually is the voltage or the field at which you have the transfer from this central valley to upper valley. That is if I have that is the gun threshold actually is if you have a velocity like that that is the gun threshold. This is the field at which 
the electrons will be transferred from the center valley to the upper valley. So that's called gun threshold because people made a device called gun device, gun diode, not the gun. It is GUNN, okay, the gun diode. So gun threshold, they say, just a name that is called. It's actually the electric field at which the scattering will take place from middle valley to center valley to the upper valley. Okay. That valley you can see is where gallium arsenide is about 3, 3.2. I also see slight ranges there, but it is around 3. So, if I quote sometimes 3, just do not be taken aback by that, it is around that value, 3, 3.2. I see all sorts of values put there around that value, okay. because after all, some of these things are simulated values. 2.8 for gallium indium arsenide, there is slightly lower value itself, that is for sure. If you see those curves which I have shown, just let me go back to that. See here, gallium arsenide that is about 3, 3.2, and indium gallium arsenide is peak is developed, that is about 2.8. More importantly, the velocity is higher compared to the gallium arsenide. Okay. Now, this is again that El minus E t, we used, used to call it as delta E there, that is the, if you have like that, that is the delta E that we are talking of and this is the band gap corresponding to that L and tau, L and tau, okay. It's to distinguish between the indirect and direct that those terms are used. So, this is the band gap that we are talking of there, it is 0.31, even there you see there are slight variations of values, 0 0.31, 0 0.55 for indium gallium arsenide and indium phosphide I used to quote 0 0.55, but it is around that point, more, more or less same. Then mean free path and all of course, you do not worry 0 0.1 and you can see that the mean free path for gallium indium arsenide is higher, which actually will give you better velocities and better mobilities. If the VC path is smaller, scattering takes place easily, mobilities are smaller. Okay. So, now the most important parameter is the delta E c. Okay. What is the delta E c? Supposing I have this is the aluminum, it is indium arsenide and this is gallium indium arsenide. It is gallium 0 0.5, 0 0.47 here, indium 0.53, aluminum 0.48, indium 0.52. So, this is 0.47, this is 0.48, very close, but this material gives 1.46 band gap. Okay. And the Tom Wolf and E G two here gives point seven five. Now from your thumb rule you can see what is the delta E C is. that is delta E c. And we had a thumb rule, two thirds of this, this minus this into two thirds, that is approximate delta E c. Now notice what has happened between L gas gas system and this. In the L gas gallium arsenide system, this band gap was 1.43 and gallium I am sorry, this was uh, 1. Uh, 9 or so, 1.93 feet 0.4, but it was less than that. So, even if it is 1.93 and if it is 1.43, you got about 0.5, but here the difference is 0.7. Therefore, this delta E c is higher in this case. Okay. You can see that delta E c is higher is shown here, 0.52. It is not exactly two thirds of that, which around that point, because after all, the delta E c is decided by the neutral levels alignment. Let me not go back to those discussion because we have just said that 
the delta E c is decided by not by chi 1 minus chi 2, but by the alignment of the neutral levels. Okay. So, aluminum gallium arsenide is a confinement, confinement layer that is uh, this layer if it is aluminum gallium arsenide and if this is gallium arsenide, this is 0.3 electron volts for a particular x. We do not go to too much of x there because you are worried about aluminum contamination there. So, here this is 0.3 for uh, L gas gallium arsenide system. Whereas, if you take this system, okay, if you take this particular system, gallium indium arsenide, and the top layer, dope layer is aluminum indium arsenide, you get con that delta EC is about 0.52. With the indium phosphide, this layer gives 0.2. I can make heterostructure between indium phosphide and gallium indium arsenide is 0.2, just for information. These, are, these two numbers which are put here are the delta E c between aluminum indium arsenide and gallium indium arsenide. This is the delta E c between indium phosphide and gallium indium arsenide. Okay. And aluminum indium arsenide and indium phosphide, if you use that confinement layer, the top layer, and indium phosphide as the undoped layer, then you will get 0.3. See, these are numbers which one should note in the sense. This gives us further mot motivation to go in for gallium medium arsenide. One of the motivation is the first one was better, better mobility, better velocities, peak velocities. The other thing is because this band gap is lower than that of gallium arsenide, you can have wide band gap materials on the top and have delta E c higher. What do you gain by having higher delta E c? You get better confinement of electrons in north. If this is higher, the quantum well is deeper, more electrons are held there, they are locked up there more. That means, the maximum current that you get or the maximum transconductance that you get as a result will be higher if the delta E c is higher, particularly maximum current because how many electrons you can hold here without opening up this, uh, without, uh, without uh, conduction in this region, that is what is implied by that. We discussed it in the previous lecture. So, delta E c determines what sort of a number of electrons and the maximum current. If you go to maximum current, then actually the signal level is high, okay, the DC current is high. So, the implication is you can make devices with low noise, signal to noise ratio high. That is one of the improve, uh, improvements that you get with gallium medium arsenide based devices with aluminum medium arsenide, low noise devices because you can go to higher current because the two dimensional electron gas concentration will be higher in this case. More electrons which are which is referring to your signal. Okay. Now, let us take a look at the, what are the different types of devices that you can make with the India phosphate based hemp. Evidently, this is what we have just now projected. Aluminum indium arsenide, gallium indium arsenide, indium phosphate low noise application because delta E c is large and the electron concentration is large. Another type of hemp, I am just projecting it to you because you have opened up real wide variety of devices that you can get when you use this type of uh, materials. You make slight change and make changes in the arrangement, you get different performance depending upon the your requirement, you can actually choose those type of devices. So, low noise is this one, but you will see that this type of device gives low breakdown voltage, very small compared to about 5 volts, less than 5 volts. So, when you get certain benefits, you lose in, so you may not be able to go to higher powers. So, what they did was remove this particular layer, put indium phosphide. Okay, gallium indium arsenide, indium phosphide. 1.46 is the band gap there, 1.35 is the band gap there. So, you get delta E c actually slightly better, but you must be very careful here. Do not plan to use the two third formula. The delta E c would be decidedly not as, that as high as that. Delta E c, I, I, I think you should work it out and see the neutral level in indium phosphide 
if not at two thirds below the conduction band, it is about one third below the conduction band. Okay. So, the neutral level here is about one third below the conduction band. In fact, it is a tremendous disadvantage for making short key barrier on indium phosphide. See, if I say indium phosphide, you have got all those levels conduction band, valence band. This may be 1.35 around that point. In gallium oxide, the neutral level was here. Okay. In gallium arsenide, you have the neutral level here, E C E V. These are all the levels, 1.43. This is gallium arsenide. This is indium phosphide. Suppose the neutral level is here, two thirds of E G, that is E naught. Okay. What is the barrier rate that you get when you make a short key barrier? See that. When the interface state density is high, the Fermi level gets locked down to that, and you get a barrier rate. Okay. I will just draw that diagram here on this side. See, you get a barrier height like this. In the short key barrier, you get it corresponding to that. That is the Fermi level. That is two thirds. This is 5 bm. So, you get you are very happy with that short key barrier. Now, suppose Suppose that particular layer, okay, suppose you have got the band gap 1.35 and if the neutral level is here, this is E naught. And it is almost E g by 3, 1.35 and E g by 3 is about 1.3 by 3, 1.35 by 3, that is about 0.4. 0 0.4, 0 0.45. If you make a short key barrier here, what will be the uh, short key barrier height? Let me remove this and draw that now. Uh, make an entire material So, this is about uh, roughly E g by 3, Indian phosphate. So, that is actually equal to 5 bm. What will you say about this now? This is E v, E c, E v and E f. So, if the barrier height is now 0.43, it is very difficult to make short key barrier with India phosphate. Okay. So, that is one of the difficulties people have faced when they made this particular thing. Okay. Only thing is you have to make modifications on the surface to improve this barrier rate. So, you have to work hard to improve this barrier rate. So, in fact, you will not see in literature a mess fit made with the indium phosphide. You do not see reports telling that indium phosphide mess fit. You see reports and devices fabricated with gallium arsenide mess fit. The methods fabricated with the gallium arsenide. That is because you get high, high barrier height there. Here you do not get. It is not a OV contact, but it is a very poor uh, junction. So, in the, if you talk of indium phosphate, you talk of a minor skill defect transition, misfit. Put an oxide layer on the top of that to make those devices. But all the same, I just put this across as another device which people think of where system 2 is there. In the phosphide, okay, to improve the breakdown voltage of the devices, probably this is breakdown voltage low because of this presence of this layer which has lot of aluminum. So, they replaced it with this. 
If you can replace this with gallium arsenide, you are on business. Instead of replacing with indium phosphide, replace this top layer with gallium arsenide. What is the benefit? No aluminum there, band gap is 1.43, two thirds of Pg minus two thirds of Pg, high delta AC will get. Whereas here, one third of Pg minus two thirds of Pg. Please remember, that is why if you look at the table there, just go back to the table, see the barrel head, the delta AC is 0.2. If you go by the thumb rule, two thirds of EG1 minus EG2, you will get close to this, close to 0.5, because that is 1 point, aluminum arsenide is 1.46, indium phosphate is 1.35. Even though the band gaps are the same, because neutral level of indium phosphate is closer to conduction band, you get this, the delta EC width between gallium indium arsenide and indium phosphate is 0.2. Please remember that. So, when you use these formulae, for finding out the delta E C, do not use band two thirds of E G minus E G 1 minus E G. Ask yourself what is the neutral level. If the neutral level location is known, you can immediately pin it down and say how much is delta E C is. Because the finally, the two neutral levels align with each other. That is the key. Okay. So, the system 2 is that, so we would put our money on gallium arsenide replacing aluminum arsenide rather than indium arsenide. But people have done these devices and said, look, I can get better power, uh, uh, medium power applications, but still the low noise is open to question. Though I just put it because people have reported that type of thing. Because delta E C is 2.2, number of electrons that you can have is not as much as that. You get higher breakdown about 10 volts or something like that. No. System 3. Throw away indium gallium arsenide. It is only for high power applications. That is, do not use indium gallium arsenide, keep that top layer, put this indium phosphide layer. This material has wider band gap compared to gallium indium arsenide, 1.35. Okay. Now you can see you still get delta E C between these two, about 0.3, because it is not. See, this is 1.46 Pg, this is 1.35. If you use your formula blindly, you will get 1.46 minus 1.35, 0.1 divided by you know, less than 0.1, but you get about 0.3. This is because the neutral level of indium phosphide is one third below the conduction band. Hello, enough food for you to think and work out these numbers. So, now just I can run through the thing because as I was projecting these things, I have mentioned what are the merits and demerits. You know the structure now, you run through the three types of devices, just uh, telling what is what. The first type, aluminum indium arsenide, gallium indium arsenide, or indium phosphide, is the most widely used. Hence, indium phosphide based. Here, just I wanted to give you some formulae because I wanted to correct some of the concepts that we had earlier. All through what we are telling is, if you mix two materials, okay, if you mix two materials, the band gap varies linearly. It is actually not linear. In fact, I have shown you, when I shown you the uh, X versus uh, aluminum content in aluminum gallium arsenide, it is not linear, it is slightly nonlinear. This is actually the equation that was given is reported in literature, e.g. is 0.356 for this system, aluminum indium arsenide, 0.356 plus 0.2.35 to y, where y is the aluminum content. Yes. So, that is about 1.46, where y is equal to 0.48. Okay. It is 1.46, 1 by is that. That is how you get, because if you try to put it linear, you will not get it. The same case is the true with the gallium indium arsenide. Gallium indium arsenide it is not exactly linear as with the x, though we had plotted approximate curve fitting into that thing and said, but then you would not get at x equal to, if you put linear at x equal to 0.47, you would not get 0.75. In fact, I had one of our friends here reporting that that formula does not fit in. It is true, it would not fit in. The correct thing is this. Okay. So, 0.75 because of the slight nonlinearity. This is just for completion sake.
Okay. Now, you can see between these two systems delta H is 0.71 and delta H is 0.32 close to the two thirds because this is E naught is a two thirds, this is E naught is a double motion of two thirds that you get that. That is what it gives you better confinement of electrons, more number of electrons in the notch. This is just reproduction of this diagram which you have drawn right at the beginning because at the end of the uh, those uh, uh, example numbers, this is the structure indium phosphide, buffer layer, calamity arsenide, this layer, this layer. Now, this buffer layer can be calamity arsenide or it can also be aluminum indium arsenide or if you want to hear one more jargon super lattice structure. What is super lattice structure? It is alternating wide band gap, small band gap, wide band gap, small band gap material. See some of these terms some must be familiar. These are coined as and when see if I have a material these are very thin layers, 5 angstroms, 10 angstroms, each one of them of that order or maybe 20 angstroms, thin layers of wider band gap. that is E C, that is E V. This type of structures are called super lattice, where you have wide band gap, narrow band gap, wide gap, narrow band gap. It is just like, you know, if you have atoms, I, I have no explanation seen in the literature saying why you call super lattice, but it is very clear. If you have atoms nearby, in the lattice, what do you have, the, what is the potential variation? If you take atom, when you move from one atom to another atom, you have got that super lattice. So, you have got the potential variation as you go near the atom, there is a dip in the potential. Okay. You have got the potential variations going like that. You have got the potential variation going like that. It is like in the case of lattice, you have got the spacing between lattice atoms which are few angstroms. Same way, if you keep this layer very thin, it is equivalent of the lattice atoms. That is why called this a super lattice. wide band gap, narrow band gap, wide band gap, narrow band gap. How many number you want is your choice. You may have 10 angstroms, 10, 10 layers you put like that, you get 100 angstroms. In fact, this layer should be as thick as possible. This is a buffer layer which actually absorbs all the defects from here, at least 0.8 angstrom microns layer. If you want super lattice, it is very easy to grow in the case of MBE. How do you grow that? Switch from L gas to gas, L gas to gas. Gas is not gas, gallium arsenide. <laughs> you have got aluminum gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide. So you have got the arsenic source all the time open, okay, and have the gallium source also all the time open. You move from here, you have gallium aluminum source also put. These are MOCBD, aluminum, no aluminum, aluminum, no aluminum. Gallium and arsenic is all the time present. This is that type of structure. I just deliberately brought into use because do not be flabbergasted if somebody comes out and I use a super lattice. There is nothing but a heterostructure, number of heterostructures which are present there. Okay, so, that is the most interesting part of that particular thing. So, this is a, a layer which is just protecting this channel layer from the contaminants, defects, etcetera, present in the lower layer. Now, these are some of the performances, L gas, gas, indium phosphide system. That is what your system 1, point of micron gate length M devices with gallium indium arsenide. This is what I am trying to point out. People have done this device they have fabricated with this buffer layer made up of gallium indium arsenide or aluminum gallium arsenide. They found that this is much better, probably because if you put aluminum indium arsenide that adds itself source of defects because of the aluminum presence. So, that may be the cause I can say. So, that is what he said here. This layer gathers that is shows better results than with the aluminum arsenide buffer. That is you use 
Gelebildiğim artmaya buffer. Then elevildiğim artmaya. Okay. Apparently the super lattices have given better performance, but it's harder to grow because you have to switch from one layer to another layer within that structure. Buffer layer should be sufficiently thick. That particular layer between the semi insulating layer and the channel layer. Uh, okay. To with low and it has low doping. That's why transit like this. If I have doping, there will be bending between these things. There's no bending here. Just potential wells put in between, that's all. You will have an average band gap corresponding to that. If you have this like this, you can talk of a band gap corresponding to that on an average. That's the trick that they do with there. You can create wider band gap material depending upon the thicknesses of those lattices, super lattices. Transistor performance, maximum output conductance of course is this is the output of the slope it indicates. More than that, what we have to look at is effective velocity is 3 into 10 to the power of 7 and mobility of 12,000. Cutoff frequency 175 gigahertz, that is really fantastic. And transconductance with 0.1 the micron gate length. See, you, you should be careful, of course, here that what sort of channel lengths you are using. I do not have both things together 0.1 the micron indium phosphide based device, 0.1 the micron gallium arsenic based device. Okay. But for this, it gives about 1000 millisiemens per millimeter. Whereas what we saw in the previous lecture for gallium arsenide for a 1 micron device is about 400 at 77 degree Kelvin and room temperature about 225 millisiemens. So, all that we are telling is this gives very good performance. Compared to statement, I do not find because the people working on the Indian phosphide, south from the rooftop, <laughs> the Indian phosphide is a material, but people working on gallium arsenide say that or they will project gallium arsenide base device. In fact, ultimately, I would think gallium arsenide based device has a better say in various aspects. You know, that is a better known technology. Cheaper than indium phosphide, but easy to handle all those. On the same count, of course, a silicon guy will say silicon is the best material, but you cannot get this sort of performance with silicon. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, this L gas gas indium phosphide system has low noise performance because of the because of the higher sheet densities in the two dimensional electron gas. Higher sheet density because electron concentration is high because delta E c is higher. So, this is the aspect that one has to remember. So, that is where you can you, you must see where it can be used. Do not use just wherever you like. You can use it in those applications, but you cannot go to higher voltages, 5 volts upper limit. So, low voltages, low noise, etcetera, you can use that. System 2, but let us quickly go through that. System 2 is instead of aluminum indium arsenide, you use put indium phosphide. Okay. It is not flourished so much, but people have projected it, tried various things. It gives because this layer, the first type, aluminum indium arsenide on gallium indium arsenide, gives breakdown voltage less than 5 volts, they said let us try putting indium phosphate in, in that in that place because this is containing lot of aluminum. This overcomes the above problem, you get over 10 volts or so. But the main problem with the indium phosphate this system 2, please remember system 1 and system 2 differences, the top layer is of indium aluminum indium arsenide, you put indium phosphate. But the moment you put that, it has problem low short key barrier head, that is how we explained that. So, what they did is they put on the top of that 150 angstroms of it, just various, you know, the moment there is problem, there are people to play games on that, try all sorts of tricks to overcome the problem. They put gallium indium phosphate with 18 percent gallium, which gave barrier rate of 0.64, better than 0.4, <laughs> okay, you get a short key. Then you on the indium phosphate layer, put gallium indium phosphate layer, which has that is match. System 3. Obviously, we are running through the thing because after all, we understand what is required and aluminum indium arsenide or gallium indium arsenide is the most popular device in indium phosphate based, but people they have take, been taking a look at other materials. System 3 is the top layer keep as aluminum indium arsenide, 
they place the indium gallium indium arsenate layer the indium phosphate to improve the breakdown voltage that will give you definitely better because indium phosphate is a white band capability compared to gallium indium arsenate okay you still get i think the delta is of about 0.3 because it is not two two but two thirds the neutral level is at one third below the conduction band please understand that delta is 0.35 to 0.4 not exactly 0.3 okay this is the cross section of that particular uh, device same device semi insulating layer buffer layer indium phosphide undoped indium phosphide layer that's a channel undoped aluminum indium arsenide aluminum indium arsenide all that you have done is instead of indium gallium arsenide you put indium phosphide people expect this to give better performance than gallium arsenide because of high velocity core shoot effects devices with point see now you can see the comparison is not existing 0.3 micron device gate length gm 610 mm cm per millimeter quite good ft 76 gigahertz not as good as indium gallium arsenide that was 750 gigahertz but 0.1 micron channel length so you can see the comparison not there maximum frequency of operation with that for unity power gain that's at, at max is one power gain unity 140 gigahertz disadvantage indium phosphide the mobility is low compared to gallium arsenide gallium indium arsenide it's about 5000 okay when the it's pure material so much lower low on resistance because of that a high on resistance i'm sorry high on resistance because of that that's a disadvantage you have to pay for for everything you want higher breakdown voltage that you pay by putting this one but there are better devices now let us just take a look at one more thing in the gallium arsenide based system, i'm just leaving the indium phosphate based system right now go back to the gallium arsenide based system where they have after seeing all these things the gallium arsenide guy guy got started getting worried okay because that is a better technology what better performance what you do if you recall yesterday what we said okay the problem was see this is the gallium arsenide based system we discussed now indium phosphide based system there are three types out of which aluminum indium arsenide gallium indium arsenide based on indium phosphide is best you get high performance now going back to gallium arsenide based semi insulating gallium arsenide buffer layer 0.8 micron it can be again super lattice or undoped gallium arsenide 0.8 micron undoped gallium arsenide okay this thickness can be reduced but no need of 0.8 then 30 angstroms of undoped aluminum arsenide gallium arsenide gallium arsenide now this is the same as same as what we have been discussing just to avoid confusion there i am putting it here so you have the undoped gallium arsenide on semi insulating gallium arsenide with a buffer layer of course in between i'm just skipping that to con avoid confusion this is a channel layer and on the top of that you have a spacer what is that undoped al gas on the top of that you have got usually doped al gas and then of course you have the sorty barrier and you have the contact here source drain okay now we saw the problem with this device was forget about that one aluminum content but you are putting up with that because you get about 0.3 delta ec and good device to get better transcendence what you have seen is you have to reduce this thickness of this layer you must reduce it but when you reduce the thickness what happens you get better trans transcendence but then you must increase the doping when you increase the doping upper limit comes up because of this short key so what you do is if you look at the diagram you will choose this as n4 15 top layer but you introduce a layer which is very thin i introduce a layer which is very thin of the order of about 
three angstroms that is the delta duct or the uh, planar duct. This layer is h into 10 to the power of 18 per centimeter cube. That is what is required is the total integrated doping here. Put very heavy doping here, just near the spacer layer, which will supply all the electrons which are required here at the channel. And this layer which is making contact with this short key make it lightly doped. So, total integrated doping is here inside. This type of device is called delta doped or pulse doped or planar doped. Okay. So, you call it as delta doped or delta doped pulse doped. or planar duct. Any one of the names? Okay. So, if you hear the delta duct hemmed, do not get worried. It is the same, same drink in, this, in a different cup. Okay. So, same old wine in the, so that is the thing, that is poor. Only difference is you have put heavy doping here close to that, just few three iron angstroms. Now, you can understand the extent of pressure the technologist bears. He has to grow a 10 to the power of 18 into 8, 8 into 10 to the power 18 doping layer, which is about three angstroms layer that control over the entire layer. That is the pressure is taken by the technologist ultimately. Okay. So, this is it. Here also you can see there is a contact layer, which is actually a smaller band gap material. So, benefit of this pulse group hemp is higher breakdown voltage, okay. higher breakdown voltage because gallium arsenic substrate is there okay. and you do not change aluminum content too high, it is 0.26. Higher two dimensional electron gas more doping is there at the edge, more electrons will be collected here. Okay. So, because of that you get higher two dimensional electron at the gas density, because that band bending will depend upon how much is the relative doping between the two layers is. V b a plus delta e c, V b a goes up if the doping is higher. Higher intrinsic transconductance, why? You can now afford to reduce the thickness, because all the doping is present here. You can reduce the thickness. And to reduce the thickness, the C s is actually larger, higher transconductance we get. Better control of threshold voltage, without worrying about doping you can change the thickness. So, you get better control of the, that is the doping concentration, total doping concentration this are V p 0. So, you can get better control without worrying about thickness. And of course, uh, linearity of the transconductance also just an added merit, but I think these are the main advantages here. I will not uh, touch upon uh, much on this now, but I will just show you because I have just few minutes left out here. There is another type of device which has emerged over the past few years. I am taking right up to the current now. The another type of device which is emerging where you can use gallium indium arsenide as the channel layer with gallium arsenide substrate nothing like that. Because today you can get semi insulating gallium arsenide which is very pure. You do not have to worry about the buffer layer, you do not have to worry about defects migrating, but still you can put a buffer layer and you can put gallium indium arsenide on gallium arsenide. Now, what are you worried about? I will take up detailed discussion next time, but I will just uh, tell you what is going to be the thing here. You are worried about realizing a epitaxial layer of gallium indium arsenide on gallium arsenide because that is mismatch. What happens if there is lattice mismatch? If you can tolerate that lattice mismatch, if there are no defects generated during that growth, then you can put gallium indium arsenide on gallium arsenide. So, gallium indium arsenide channel layer which will give high mobility. On the top of that put gallium arsenide which is the n plus layer. 
which actually you can make it also the delta dope, then you do not have the problem of the aluminum content. You have got 1.43 is the band gap of calcium arsenide, you have got calcium arsenide band gap is uh, 0.75, so you got 0.5 electron volts as the delta EC. So, that sort of thing you get benefit you get. So, there if you see, I will go through this particular uh, detail the next time where this is the substrate of one lattice, this is substrate of another lattice constant, this is more. If you arrange, you can get this type of structure where the intermediate layer is defective, you can see the bonds are broken. That is what you get if you grow lattice mismatch devices, tremendous amount of stress is there pulling each other and defect will be generated. What we are, would like to show is or see is that you can get generate without defects a layer like this provided you grow a very thin layer that is called a strain layer concept. We will discuss that in the next lecture few things before we go to HPT. Thank you.